So something that you really, really want when you're really, really not getting it feels really, really bad. Is that what you're saying to us? If it was like the Adele tickets, don't really care. Mm -mm. This is the law-based thing that you're wanting to extract from all of this. This is the nugget that you're looking for. If I don't want it, and in my not caring, I can get it. Now, stay with us because that sucks in and of itself. <laughs> if I don't care about it, and therefore I'm not resisting it, it will come easily. If I want it a little bit, and I have a little resistance, it'll be a little difficult. If I really want it, and I really don't expect it, or I really don't believe it, then I'm going to have a big time struggle. So, the key is to want it, to want something a little and let the desire for it grow naturally. Stay with us. To want it a little, or let's say, want it generally. Want it generally, and then let the desire for it gather momentum. Because if you'll start with a general desire, you'll have less resistance in it. And law of attraction will cause that general desire to pick up speed. So it'll get more and more until you'll end up with a very healthy desire and no resistance. And then manifestations that are going to pop into your experience all over the place. Did you follow the formula? Yes. So can I repeat it back to make sure I got it? Yes. So letting go of specifics, specific people, details, like making the list of what I'm looking for and just... I want a companion and I want somebody that makes me feel happy and just like the general feeling and then distract myself with other things, recognize that it will gel and come together. And only you know how general you have to be. In other words, if you get so far as to say, I want a companion that I don't have, just a sort of obvious thing. How about I noticing when you have it, like even with friends, it's nice to have somebody with you. It's nice to have this. It's nice when somebody... Well, only you will know by how it feels when you come across those thoughts. But we're suggesting that you start in a far more general place, such as I'm living happily ever after, and the universe is yielding to me on so many fronts. And I really believe that whatever I want on any subject can come to me. And there's evidence of what I'm wanting coming to me in many, many ways. And I'm looking forward to the discovery of more and more avenues through which well-being can flow to me. And I'm certain that I have all kinds of desire that is lined up for me that's in my vortex that's being yielded to me and I believe that the universe is yielding more to me than I'm maybe even able to receive and I'm getting better and better at receiving it and I really like this other stuff that I'm doing and I really like understanding the laws of the universe and I'm always looking for opportunities where I can help other people see that how the laws of the universe are working too and now we're going to get a little more specific and you see if in getting more specific you're still in that easy place and I like the idea of being a deliberate creator and I I so like deliberately creating among others who are deliberately creating. It's so fun to meld my mind with others. And it is so much fun to watch the universe bring to me the cooperative components of what I'm looking for. And therefore, it is illogical to me that the universe would not already have worked out cooperative components to co-create with me on many fronts. Companionship is just a really natural thing on all subjects. There really isn't anything that I ever really do alone. There are almost always others around that I can bounce off of or that I can respond to in some way. This is a cooperative universe. This is a collaborative universe. The universe knows who I am and what I want. And the universe knows, now we're going to get a little specific, maybe too specific for you. The universe knows who I am and what I want relative to all topics and even relative to this topic of companionship or partnership. The universe knows who I am and what I want. The universe has been watching my expansion and evolution. The universe knows exactly where I am. The universe knows if I'm keeping my own promise to myself. Am I ready to bring a partner to me? Am I really in alignment with my true desire? Because if I'm really in alignment with my true desire, then I'm ready for the universe to yield that true desire for me. But if I'm not quite ready, then I really don't want the universe to yield it to me, even though I know the universe is going to yield to me, because law of attraction can't keep that from happening. So... A person comes to me who's not quite right because I'm not quite right yet with my own desire. I have more opportunity to work more of the bugs out, more opportunity to really discover who I am, more opportunity to not care so much what others are thinking around me, more opportunity to flow the energy and not be so aware of how others are responding to the energy that I'm flowing. 
I'm getting ready to be ready for it. And when I'm ready, the evidence will show itself to me. I appreciate how the universe brings me an exact replica of whatever I've got going on vibrationally so that I can see it, so that I can take the hit of it, so that I can feel the disappointment of it, so that I can take the bounce of it, so that I can launch the rocket of it, so that I can begin again becoming more specific from a very beginning place of generality. So we're going to make a very strong statement. You can't get there from there. Now stay with us. You can't get there from there. You can't get to a manifestation of something that you've got lots of resistance to. You can't get there from there. Just stay with us for a minute. Because it's not like the things we usually say to you. Because we usually say you can be or do or have anything. But we're saying this to you because we want you to sharpen your skills of creation because you're ready to do that. You can't get there from there. What do you mean, Abraham? You can't get to that manifestation that you want given the vibration that you're offering. Oh. So what's off in the vibration that I'm offering? You've got too much resistance for that to unfold easily. Well, what do I do about the resistance? Should I work harder? Should I think about it more? No, that will make the resistance more. What should I do? Get off the subject. Get off the subject. That will make the resistance less. You see, if you get it, and we're going to ask you if you do, do you believe that your vortex exists? Yes. Do you believe that there's a vibrational version already queued up for you? Yes. Do you believe that universal forces are arranging circumstances and events and that the cooperative components are all lined up for you? Yes. So if you believe that, then what is the piece that you've got to do? You've got to allow it. You've got to get yourself in the receiving mode, which means you've got to be happy anyway. You've got to be lighter about it. Right. Well, how do you be light about something that you're heavy about? Don't think about it for a while and it will dissipate. And then next time you think about it, think about it in more general terms. It's like the movie that our friend was talking about. You have to reestablish your own communication between you and your inner being. And your inner being is not speaking to you in words. We sort of distort that when we're talking to you with all of these words. In fact, sometimes the words are so much it's like a hair blowing back experience for you. You'd be better off not even listening to all of these words. Your inner being is not speaking to you in words. Your inner being is offering blocks of thought which you are translating into impulses, into memories, into thoughts, you see. Is it safe to go back to the memories that were happy? Like, does that generate where you're thinking that's like, just wipe it all away? Do you feel how reluctant you are to let go of what you've been doing that isn't working? Well, that I, I thought did work. I mean, I, I remembered this and then somebody came, but then they went away. What, what? No, 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 no. They did come. You it see, worked. what they just reflected back to you, they just channeled their own inner beings. <laughs> and what they reflected back to you is what you're doing vibrationally. It doesn't matter what the words or the actions are. They reflected back to you the mood. You got to get over being disappointed before you can start the momentum toward what you want. You got to get over being lonely before you can start the momentum toward what you want. You got to get over feeling like it's not fair before you can get something that you want. Everything that we're talking about, we're trying to get you to a neutral zone, to this place where the resistance is all finally at bay, where you can wake up in the morning and start thinking some thoughts that are getting you in the direction of what you do want. This will help you a lot. Your inner being never looks back. So your inner being is not trying to mine anything that went anyway before in order to give you something now. Your inner being's not looking back. Your inner being's only looking forward. And so when you look back, it's almost always a minefield. Almost always. Okay, so really just wipe everything and go neutral. But even in the wiping of it, can you feel that the wiping of it is an action that doesn't wipe it? It shines a light on it. I'm going to wipe that out. What, that? <laughs> I'm wiping it out. I'm not going to think about it anymore. I'm not going to think about that anymore. Oh. <laughs> You've got to change the subject. You've got to change the subject. The subject has to be your happiness, not a relationship that you think is the path to your happiness. The subject is happiness. And there's happiness in so many subjects. Okay. Let's Just got to be happy, not happy with this ulterior motive. I want to be happy universe with a person. 
Yeah, I'm happy and so, so much of my life is working out. So much of my life is working out. We believe that. It's easy to have a life that's working out and to once again get hooked on conditions. And so these conditions make me happy and that one doesn't. And so you're still kind of stepping back into some conditional living. All conditional living means is trying to fast forward into a manifestation to examine the conditions. Unconditional living, unconditional love, unconditional life is going for the emotion and never mind the way it's going to manifest. You just know it's going to be good when it does. So you were right when you said to us, so just think about happiness and think about how it feels to be appreciated and think about how it feels to appreciate. But there is so much in this world that you can appreciate. Do you know when you are in a nose to nose love of Affair with the love of your life and you think that what's happening is that person is loving you what's really going on is you are loving that person what's really going on is you're finding endless things about that person that your inner being agrees with so it's just constant focusing yourself into alignment and using that person as the excuse and you know you could use a hundred people and their best qualities to do exactly the same thing And you could let those hundred people help you tune to what you want. And then someone who holds all of those manifested already or potential to manifest qualities that you have trained yourself to be active in your vibration make their way into your experience. It's just such a lovely thing. You know why we want this manifestation for you? Because... It's so delicious because the misses and the hits are all part of the process. When something works a little, you come to understand creation even more. When something doesn't work, you come to understand creation even more. And once this gets rolling, you'll never ever again doubt that you can be or do or have anything that you want. That's just a giving. It's just this sort of cat and mouse game that you begin playing with the universe in discovering your own readiness for when it's going to happen, you see. It's inevitable that it's going to happen. Are you taking away from this yet the feeling that there's just no reason not to be happy? That you could get good enough at it that there's just no reason not to be happy? That doesn't feel so far-fetched to you. And do you know how remarkable that is? Do you feel how far you've come just in this conglomeration of conversation that we've had together, just in these few short minutes that we've been together today? And right now, right now, more than ever before, you believe in happiness. You believe in your ability to align with what your inner being knows you want about everything. Talk about three wishes. Talk about endless goods flowing towards you and experiences. There's no reason for you ever to be disappointed. That is the distortion of all distortions. And it's not for any reason other than your ability to focus right now. And your ability to focus right now must not ever again be because you're focused on manifestations. That's not going to fly with you ever again. That doesn't cut it because that manifestation can change right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Never again complain about a manifestation that is not pleasing to you because they are changeable by you now. So that's like saying, I don't like what I'm creating. I'm disappointed in what I'm creating, not in what happened. I'm disappointed in what I'm creating and I'm doing it now. And I'm not disappointed because of the subject of what I'm creating. I'm disappointed because of the process of creating right now. I've got it all balled up in some weird way. You see, you didn't come for the manifestation. You came for the manifesting. You didn't come for the creation. You came for the creating. You came because you were a creator and a creator's got to create, you see. And so you've done most of the process. You sifted, you sorted, you put it in the vortex. It's there for you. But when you get crossways of that, then it starts bogging down and your emotions tell you what to do. Your emotions tell you what to do. Disappointment is not an emotion you want to foster. Disappointing stories are not the stories you want to tell. Disappointments are not the things you want to regurgitate. Disappointments about anything are not the thing that make your world go round. Disappointments take you into the past where you have no power. Optimism takes you into the now and into the future where all of your power is. 
What life is and what the thrill of life is, is being on that brink of the next explosion into your mind. The next realization of this big thought, this big knowing, this big understanding, this big manifestation. Bigger manifestation. Manifest, 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 manifest. Bigger, 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 bigger. Don't you 